Howdy folks, today we are taking a look at Clamber Sky is the Limit, an excellent mountaineering game with a good level of reality. The game is on the whole very visually beautiful and its gameplay is fun and quite realistic with the management of your backpack, for example, weight, distribution of objects, balance, etc. With its minigame string climbing, for example, taking into account energy, temperature, hunger, etc. There are six peaks in the game, including the most difficult ones to climb, such as K2 and Everest. I think more mountains will be added with DLCs in the future. The beginning of the game takes place on a peak design for tutorial. You'll be able to climb different peaks that you unlock as you progress. Before you start, a screen with a map appears where you get information about the selected mountain. The map marks the starting camp, suitable places to camp during the climb, steep slopes, ice walls, cliffs and similar points. We can also see the ambient temperature and difficulty level of the mountain to be climbed. You should plan the climb by looking at those hints. It is very important to prepare and inspect the equipment in advance. If you make a mistake, if you are slow on the road or misread the time and duration of the camp, you will get stuck and fail. In addition, the game shows you the equipment you need to take with you for selected peak. You should buy your gear suitable for the peak you want to climb. The game has a prestige and money system, you earn this from companies that sponsor you before each climb. With money you can buy or improve the equipment you need to climb the mountain. I can say that the game has every gear that a mountainer needs. There are four categories that contain what you need to add your inventory. Food, climbing equipment, camping equipment and clothing suitable for weather conditions. For ration, you can take energy bars, instant soups and instant food that you need to heat on the stove. You need to carry a small gas stove and mess tin with you for cooking. For shelter, you should buy a tent and mat or sleeping bag depending on the weather. For climbing leather to go over cliffs, hook place it in rock and ice to creep place it in ice and picket place it in snow for fixing safety ropes, ice axe for climbing icy walls, oxygen mask for breathing in at high altitude, flashlight, helmets and gloves. The most important thing is the clothes you choose according to weather conditions of the peak you climb. If you wore thin clothing for the condition you are in, you may freeze. If you dress too thick, your stamina will drop and you will move slowly. There are four different indicators in the game that we should pay attention to. Stamina, mental condition, food and body temperature. The equipment you take with you affects these indicators. For example, you can increase your mental health by drinking a hot soup or wearing a helmet on your head. I think this is a very nice detail. After we get to equipment, we need to arrange them in a balanced way on our backpack. Since the backpack is divided into three parts, you should stack the items in a way that gives equal weight to each part so that your backpack does not disturb your balance. When you start the expedition, a simple and effective HUD appears on your screen. At the bottom, there are boxes to assign keys to your inventory. With the weather bar at the top, you can learn the weather conditions and determine the road of your climb. In the upper right corner, there are four indicators that we will always look at. There is an indicator on the left that shows the status you are in. On the right, the three hard icons show how many attempts you have. And below, that is the survival action indicator, which is the most important mechanic of the game. Every survival action you make deducts points from 4K indicators. There are different mini games for the every survival action you do. The game requires serious planning and calculations. The mini games I have come across aren't complicated or difficult. 
but they require serious planning and mistakes can be challenging. You can regain the indicator points you spent by eating energy bars as the easiest way. But in more serious cases, you may need to camp, breathe and eat. Crossing the gap with the ladder is the easiest mini game. You try to cross the gap by balancing with Q and E keys. After that, there is climbing. When the dots appear on the wall, left click as close as possible to the two dots on the wall to pull up yourself. The redder the color of the dot, the more energy it consumes. You use the ISX with the W and AD buttons. We go up by following the green icons on the ice wall. Finally, you try to climb the steep slopes. When you press the ALT key, the red and green dots appear and you can see the state of the ground. Red means you need to use rope and anchor. The indicator in the lower left corner shows how steep the slope is. There are three different anchors you can use depending on the type of slope. In addition, the type of slope determines how you climb. For example, icy terrain reduces the maximum slope of a non-slip slope from 60 degrees to 30 degrees. As you go to the heights of the summit, you need to use an oxygen mask which adds another mechanic to the game. You also use a headlamp to see your surroundings at night. I'm not a mountainer, I can compare it real life, but I think the game is very detailed and realistic, challenging and requires good planning, just like reality. The graphics are good, you feel the challenging mountain atmosphere while playing the game. The technical part of the climb too, few parts of the learning curve are uncovered, but overall you can learn the basics and then improve. Sound design are good, I didn't hear any music in the game except the menu. This is normal for a simulation game. An interesting and unusual simulation game I have not seen such a word. The views inside the game are truly breathtaking. The game itself is pleasant. I like this game and I recommend it to everyone.